Hello, hello, everybody. Randy Hilarski here, coming at you tonight from Panama City, Panama. Look, I know a lot of people are watching the NBA Finals, but Randy could care less about the NBA Finals. I don't watch sports. My sports is making money, and uh, I think a lot of us feel the same way. It feels good to make money. <laughs> So I got a couple things I want to share. Hey, Brian, what's up, brother? I have got a new toy I want to unveil. Hey, Scott, something really cool for marketing for Hacks and for Pulse Chain. Donnell, what's up? Yeah, sports are overrated. I was a huge, I used to be so into Boston Red Sox growing up, even though I'm from New York, Western New York. Everyone around me was a New York fan, New York Yankees fan. I'm like, no. Italian Polish family, everyone was a Yankees fan. So I hated the Yankees. <laughs> so I uh, cheered for the Red Sox since 86 when they played the Mets. So it was tough going until they won the World Series, but I just don't care anymore. Now I still watch the Buffalo Bills because that's my hometown team, but you know, I'm in Panama, so maybe I get to watch two games a year. But that's about it for sports. All about that hex. What's up, man? All right, guys. So I want to unveil my new toy. This is badass. And I think a lot of you guys are going to get one, too. All right, check this out. Oh, yeah. That's my new HyperX mic. Showing off those hex colors. Looking good. All right, now I got another one to show you. Oh, yeah. Now we got the pulse chain colors, and it's actually pulsing. Watch, let me speed it up so I'm starting to get excited here, guys. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's like a heartbeat, oh yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to show up my new toy to everybody. Thought it was really cool. Um, let me just go back to the, the wave. There's different, different selections you can have. This is the wave one. Save the mic. There we go. Look at that. Jeez, it's flying. All right. I'm learning, so let me slow it down a little bit. All right. So, what do you guys think? All right. So. Uh, these are about, uh, I think on Amazon, they're about 140 bucks. It cost me more because I had to ship it down to Panama. So I had to add some extra weight to it. I think it was an extra like 50 bucks for me. But man, this thing is cool. It's called the HyperX something S. Um, really cool. They're on Amazon. It took me a month to get it. it was, I guess it was stuck in the LA ports and it took a while to get down here. But whatever, man, I finally made it. <laughs> and I'm ready to start my live streaming. Uh, I am waiting for my pulse chain lamp and my hex lamp. I have to get with the, the guys. I can't remember the gentleman's name. The guy over in the UK, he just moved to France, so it's going to take a little while to be set up. And hopefully, he'll, uh, I'll send him the cash and he'll send me my lamps. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that Pepe lamp, I think it's cool. <laughs> my, my son loves it. He loves messing with it. All right. And, uh, I, you know, hey, this is live streaming, so we got to get our props, right? So we got Tyrannosaurus hex. And we got the uh, the Pulsaurus. <laughs> oh man, this live streaming stuff's gonna be fun. Um, I, I really, I'm really gonna get into it. Uh, I don't know how much I'm gonna be doing, but it, it's still, it's still a great time. All right, so let's get right into it. I'm gonna pull up the beautiful charts or over at Orox, so you guys can check them out. Get over to Orox here, and this is going to be our hourly chart. Uh, I've been kind of bearish on Hex over the last couple of days. Uh, the demand just wasn't there. Uh, as you can see, we fell this on the hourly. Earlier today, we were below the uh, zero line, so it wasn't very exciting. You know, I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe if we don't hear an announcement about Pulse Change launch, maybe we're going to fall back into the sixes. Uh, that, that was what I was suspecting. But then somebody came in and they just made a huge buy order and just brought us right back above the zero line for the demand. 
And uh, I mean, yeah, it turned green there, but you know, two hours later, we're back with a bearish indicator. So we're we're going against the tide right now, and this is the hourly chart, obviously. And you know, things if, if the pulse chain doesn't launch soon, it's it, we're going to come back down. There's no doubt in my mind. There's a lot of people that are speculating that are just here for the pulse launch. And, you know, there's traders out there. Not everyone is a staker like those of you guys who are watching. Okay, let's switch up to the daily. Um, yesterday, we had a green indicator. Today, we have a red indicator. Uh, if we, we still have like another hour or so until we get a, a new day. What is it? What time is it? It's 8.20 p.m., 9.20 p.m. Eastern. So maybe in about two hours or so, or two and a half hours, we get a new a new candle here, and hopefully it'll be green. If not, no worries. I mean, this is the daily indicator. We are still above the zero line, even though we do have the Forex indicator telling us that, hey, look, it's, it's going lower. And let's look at the weekly. The weekly, same thing. Um, this little... Bearish indicator showed up. I think it was yesterday or the day before. And but you know, I was I was telling uh, somebody on Twitter today, and they posted their chart. I'm like, yeah, we might have might be a little bearish right now. But look at the demand, guys. <laughs> We're still way over the zero line for the weekly. Way over. I, mean, I don't even know if it uh, has been around a while. We might be able to pull up a monthly. Oh. Yeah, here's the monthly chart. The, the indicators haven't even started showing yet because we're not old enough. This is, I think, this goes off of version two of, uh, of Uniswap, so it's just not enough information yet. So let's go back to the weekly. So yeah, we got a we got a little bit of a, a bearish signal there, but you know, guys, it's not going to be it's not going to be a problem for those of you guys who are staked. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> until now, spray. Oh shucks, we got an, we got another indi uh, another payout. Another payout that was way more than my nursing salary. That's all I got to say. All those years working 16-hour uh, shifts of the overnight and doing all that crazy shit. Oh, man. Took a beating on my body. But my, my payouts with Hex just crush it. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to go back to how about this one. So I, I just I'm just not convinced, guys. The thing is that the AI or the artificial intelligence behind the indicators does not know about the pulse chain launch. So the AI is just dumb. It's just looking at the signals. It's looking at all the different aspects that go into making the particular Borax indicator that they have. So it's no different than if it's looking at Bitcoin or anything else. Hey, head center. Well, something, what's up, brother? So the signals are stupid. They have no idea about the actual news that's about to happen and the FOMO that's about to hit the whole hex market. So I'm not too worried. Uh, even though, yeah, this, it looks bearish. All the charts are telling us it's bearish, but if we launch tomorrow, all those signals are going to be wiped out. It's just going to go right up. So I, I saw um, Gerardo make a video earlier and he was showing that we're in the, in the rainbow there and we're staying within the, a nice, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, geez, a nice funnel there going up and to the right. And it's looking good, guys. I, I'm excited. My family's excited. Everybody I know is in hex now. Everyone who's close to me is in hex. Uh, it just what else can we do? All we can do is, hey guys, you want to come along with me for this ride, or do you want to continue doing what you've been doing? So, <laughs> man, I, I, I'm I'm still beside myself. I don't know if you guys saw my last week's stream, but. I was like, I had chills <laughs> thinking about what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. I think Gerardo showed that if we go into another bubble, we break above uh, the line that he had drawn, we go into another bubble, we can easily hit 70 cents. At 70 cents? For for many of the hexagons I know, that puts them easily nine nine figures. Easy. That's, and that's anybody who's a dolphin and above. Every split would be a millionaire at that point. <laughs> so that... That's life-changing money. Um, yeah, you can't touch it all right now, but that's always the argument I hear is people like, oh, but you can't touch it, Randy. What does it matter? If I could touch it, I'd probably sell it like a dumbass. I mean, like I did with Bitcoin. When I did with Bitcoin, 
you know, uh, I, I was, I had weak hands, right? At my peak, I had like 17. And um, then the next day I lost seven because I was a stupid trader, <laughs> trading with leverage and doing things like that. You guys don't need to do that. You know, you guys could uh, learn from people like me who used to do the bad, have the bad habits in crypto and uh, start just staking and just put it long. You know, I think my average is still, it's probably a little bit less now. It was 12 years, but I did a couple stakes around the 10 year mark. So it's probably dropped a little bit under 12, but man, let's go for it. Now there's not something else I want to talk about guys. Uh, today was the beginning of Cyber Polygon. Uh, it's the big event uh, sponsored by the World Economic Forum. These are not our friends. These are our enemies. And um, they're the same group that was behind the Agenda 2020 event that launched prior to the beginnings of the current problem that we have. Um, I'm not gonna say the name because I don't want YouTube to take my video down or you know, take my channel down. But the same people that were behind that event that included Bill Gates and you know, Klaus Schwab and those kind of guys, then the, stuff, the bad stuff started happening. Uh, I think the event was September 2019. And then the bad stuff started happening in December. Well, such a coincidence, exactly what they were doing war games for. Well, Cyber Polygon is the same group of folks. They're doing their event, started today. And they're talking about taking the internet down, what happens with, um, uh, like, say, a nuclear power plant goes down or a dam, you know, big infrastructure projects, things like that. Hey, Pablo, what's up? Hey, it's, uh, thanks for teaching us. I dropped the 55. Yeah, nice. Get that 55, 55, man. I used to do all 55, 55, 55 for a while, but I've actually slowed down on that. I've uh, started to put some earlier ones in. You know, my, my son's, all of his can be 55, 55. He's only three and a half, so great. <laughs> 15 years would be perfect. He'll be, uh, he'll be uh, well on his way to adulthood by then. And, uh, He's going to be unschooled, so uh, he'll probably be all done with school by the time he's 14, 15 years old. I'm, I'm hoping so. But yeah, so uh, pay attention to Cyber Cop Polygon, guys. I'm sure there's going to be some sound bites coming out soon because it did start today. And I, I want to know what's happening. You know, pay attention to these people. Watch what they say. Uh, I don't know about you, but my money's been flowing out this week. In the last week, I've been preparing, uh, starting to buy dry goods. Uh, I bought a solar panel kit. I bought uh, some battery packs. I took my truck to the shop. It hasn't been driven in a year because we were in Mexico and all that. I took it to the shop, got it in tip top condition. It's ready to go, new tires. <laughs> I did all that. It's like <laughs> money was like water flow this, these last two weeks. And uh, like, it just, <laughs> I was actually I got frustrated today. I told my wife, I was like, man, I've had to cash out so much crypto over the last week. And she goes, I know, but we still got some other things to pay to get ready. I'm like, okay. So I don't know if anybody else paying attention to this stuff because, uh, you know, once bitten, twice shy, baby. You know, these, these people, they did the event in 2019. Two months later, you know, people were falling over in a certain country. And, you know, three and a half months later, I was locked down here in Panama. And uh, I, I don't want to go through that again. I want to be prepared that the second this bad shit happens, we're ready to go to the interior of the country and bug out to an area, um, you know, maybe a house in the country area. So uh, we're not going to stay in the city if that shit goes down. So it makes no sense. I'm trying to protect my family, and we should all be doing the same. It's not like it costs a ton of money to uh, to have all of these backups ready. Yeah, don't also be prepped. Yeah, exactly. Be prepped doesn't. It, I mean, how much does it cost to buy you know, like ten boxes of? Uh, instant ramen noodles or something, you know, just, just to have something and, and a whole bunch of peanut butter and just, just, just things to be there. Cause you don't want to be in the grocery store when everyone else is trying to go to the grocery store. Um, I remember the beginning of the issue that we have right now, uh, about three weeks into it, we go to the local grocery stores here and man, all the, all the imported stuff was not there. It was, it was just local things, which wasn't a problem, you know, because here in Panama, we're self-sufficient, you know, like we got plenty of, agricultural products. Panama grows its own stuff. They have one of the largest exporters of cattle and you know things like that. So everything local was fine, but anything that is imported, like I like Peter Pan honey roasted peanut butter. 
good luck, man. Couldn't get it because that comes from the U.S. So um, really, it really uh, freaked me out. That was the first time that uh, in my life that I felt that uncomfortable, and I don't want to feel that way again. Uh, I grew up in a, a family that sustained. We had gardens, and uh, I was a gardener home my whole childhood. And then when I turned into adult, I gardened some other stuff. And uh, so I got those green thumbs, and I have no problem going back to that lifestyle. When, when I grew up poor, you know, and uh, we didn't have much. And you know, we, my mom, her idea of work for us, go in the backyard and pick some green peas. So I <laughs> had no problem with that. But crypto has given us, given us the opportunity to not, to not worry too much about the finances. And I, I think uh, for those of you guys who are new to crypto, let's talk to you for a second. A couple of weeks back, I, I got on a show with Cultivate Crypto and Dollar Cost Crypto. Uh, you guys know him as Miguel. And uh, we, we discussed how, how it feels when you first get into crypto. It's so overwhelming. Ex flip your sound from computer mic to external. How, do you just need more gain? Is that, is that better? I thought I had it on, I thought I had it on the right one. Average trombone player, is that better? I turned the gain up a little bit. I'll play with it more. Um, hopefully it sounds fine. Yeah, so we talked about how it's like to, when you first get into crypto, you, here, maybe I'll turn off the uh, AC. Maybe it's picking that up. How's that? All right, so it was scary in the beginning and I, I, I loved it. And I, I had this adrenaline rush where uh, I was part of something that was world changing that I could educate other people. And I was constantly going to events. I, I was uh, meeting people that you know, where I wanted to be in life success wise. And I got to hang out with a lot of the, those folks that um, the early crypto folks that we considered the heroes, right? Um, you know, like Ira Miller, who was the founder of Point of Bolt, was a good friend of mine here in Panama. His girlfriend, Cindy Zimmerman, who now works for Celsius. She's one of the top people at Celsius. Uh, they lived here. Eric Voorhees was here. Uh, it, we had a really tight community. And then I go to events, and I get to have lunch with Trace Mayer multiple times, and and, I, and uh, one of the founders of Napster, Adrian Scott, who lives here, was a good friend for, for quite some time. I haven't seen him since I came back from Mexico, but he does live here in Panama. And uh, so crypto gave me the opportunity to meet people that were um, changing the world, who were doing things that were really cool. Uh, a lot of people um, thought that file sharing was a bad thing, like Napster, right? And like, oh, you're stealing from the, the companies that make the music and, you know, your, di your device's tiny mic is picking up, picking you up just in sound. It says your basic, your mic isn't on, your device's tiny mic isn't picking you up. Really? Let me see. Let me go to, sorry guys, I'm gonna change this. Oh, it says I'm on the HyperX. Hmm. Well, yeah, mic's on. I don't know. I don't know what I have to change in settings. I'll play with it later, though. That that's for doing interviews. This is picking up every. This should pick up everything. Yeah, Donnell. So yeah, um, Napster was. That was one of the first things I learned when I got into. Uh, um, the internet stuff, right? It's it, where you are sitting. I'm not sitting, guys. I'm actually standing. <laughs> yeah, I just pick, I just made it so it's picking up sound. Maybe it's because I don't know. I don't, I don't know what size the front of the mic, which size the back. Maybe this side is the front. Who knows? Maybe that's the problem. I just I just set it up two hours ago, so <laughs> I didn't even play with you. I was just so excited to show everybody. But yeah. Um, when, when technology first comes out, there's people who are going to come up against you. And when I first got into Bitcoin, everyone called it a scam. Even uh, family members didn't want anything to do with it. And uh, it, it was kind of scary uh, when everyone you know is telling you're an idiot. And it was the same thing when we were doing file sharing. 
You know, I, I tell my friends, oh, I just downloaded 50 songs last night. <laughs> my friend like, dude, that's stealing. Because I was going, I was in a church in Columbus, Ohio at the time. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's it's free on the internet. Hey, do 43 what's up, brother? And, and you know, we used to, you know, just, it's like, it's like borrowing somebody else's CD, right? And I had no problems with it. So when Bitcoin came out, a lot of people told me I was, involved in a scam, a Ponzi scheme, and those things. Well, guess what, guys? We and Hex are dealing with the same issues that I dealt with back in 2014. Exactly the same issues. It's not even it's not even funny anymore. I mean, what there was a certain whale in crypto who I am friends with, and the first thing the person said to me was when I introduced them to Hex, they're like, oh, isn't that that Ponzi scheme? And I was like, oh my fucking God. This is like, this, this is like deja vu all over again. I already went through this once in my life when it came to, to crypto. Now I have to go through this again. And I, I just, <laughs> um, I've, I've told the story of what happened to me on Twitter. I, I lost thousands of followers, thousands when I started talking about Hex. And People don't talk to me any longer. People have blocked me that I thought were my friends. So uh, even now that we're making this kind of money, they're, they're now the response is, oh, but you can't cash out. What do you mean I can't cash out? I can cash out. I got, a, I got a couple states right now that I can cash out at this current time that are way more than the amount of money that I invested. And I know there's a bunch of you that feel the same way. So when people say that kind of stuff to me, I just, I just blow them off, man. I, you know, it's like, you guys, I don't really feel like you're here to help me. You know, I, I was trying to help you and you just don't want to hear it. So uh, just ghost them, man, make new friends. You got a new tribe now. You know, anybody who's in Hex is family to me. As long as they don't talk shit. There's a couple people that talk shit before, you know, and I just mute. <laughs> Cause people, sometimes there's people in your family you can't stand too. Yeah, David says uh, you can always early end stake, but it's going to cost you. Yeah, okay. Now let's talk about early end stakes right now. Yes, I could early end stake. I've got a whole bunch of stakes. I could early end stake some of them, but I would lose all my pre big pay my big payday. For those of you guys who do not know, if you have big payday in a stake, you cannot end stake until the day it end stakes, or you will lose your big payday money. You cannot. <laughs> Oops, for those of everyone who thought they would try to early end stake if things went south. No, you can't, man. You're in for the long run now. <laughs> Richard got that hook in. <laughs> He's keeping us online. Hey, smart guy. I don't know if I've ever told the story publicly, but I was, uh, I'm was i a seasoned crypto vet, and I been around the block a few hundred times for launches when, when a crypto launches. And about... I think it was about month three, uh, or right after I started watching uh, Hexo's show, right in the lockdown began. I was trying to look at strategies of what to do with Hex. I had already staked some, but I had some liquid and I continued to buy. And I was thinking to myself, okay, what happens? I'm a buy the rumor, sell the new guy, news guys, how I always made my money in crypto. And I looked at it and I looked at the big payday and I said, you know what? What if I just sell all of my liquid hacks like three or four days or a week before the big payday and buy it back after? Well, if I would have done that, I'd have double the hacks that I have right now. <laughs> if I would have just followed my instincts, but instead I just staked on pre big payday. Yeah, yeah, hex fish, absolutely. Hex will show you who your real friends are. Absolutely. My best friend's in, so that was cool. You know, he doesn't, he's never listened to me his whole life. He's finally listening to me. Oh, man. So, yes, I was going to, man. I was going, I was planning on doing that, but I, I fell to the peer pressure. <laughs> we were all telling each other, we got us, we got a stake, we got a stake. And uh, I did all, I staked everything, man. I got, I got a lot coming for big payday, but still, if I would have uh, sold like a week before and bought back a couple days or the day after, I would have doubled up. But hey, that's life. Still doing well. I'm not going to complain. Uh, yeah, Whale said he bought most of his after big payday. Now, for those of you guys who are buying big pit, uh, crypto 
or excuse, hex after a big payday and staking that you don't have that problem. You could end stake yours as long as you get to the 50% mark and you're gonna get all of your um, principal back, which, which is actually probably, in my opinion, it's actually a better position because, you know, listen, you can, you guys can talk shit about people who early end stake, but we don't know their personal situations. There's some people that might really, really need that money. Uh, maybe it's a medical issue or you know, who knows, right? Life situations come, right? What if I got really, when I was up in Mazatlan, Mexico recently, I was up in Sinaloa country, <laughs> the only place in Mexico that was totally open thanks to the cartels. <laughs> uh, I'm an anarchist, guys. And um, I got really sick. I, I just came down with bout after bout of kidney stones. I, it was really rough. And a good thing I was in Mexico because I just got to pay cash and it barely cost anything for me to get treated up there. It's ridiculous. I mean, my wife, we come home, she gets some dental work. And her and here in Panama, her dental works like fifteen hundred bucks, and, and all of my treatment when I was in Mexico cost less than three hundred dollars. <laughs> Crazy. So, uh, yeah, I want to thank Mazatlan. It was a great time when we were there. If you guys ever get a chance to go, beautiful city, beautiful people. Just uh, you know, watch your back when it comes to the. I'll try to take advantage of you, man. <laughs> It's the one thing I like about Mexico, man. It seems like everything you do, someone's trying to take advantage of you financially, like whether it's just an extra buck or an extra two bucks or trying to um, listen to this. Our Airbnb that we stayed in, it was a nice Airbnb. And the landlord, he welcomed, welcomed us into the, as like a compound. They had like six apartments. They had a beautiful pool on the first floor. And he says, if you want it, if you want the pool, I'll give you a great deal, $200 for the whole time you're staying here. I'm like, motherfucker, <laughs> this is an Airbnb. This should be included in, in, in the stay. And uh, he's like, oh, it's, it's extra. <laughs> it's like this true Mazatlan, man. <laughs> All right. So uh, Donnell says, my, my friend staked like 100 bucks after the sell-off, after big payday. He's at 2100 now. His only regret that he didn't make, I didn't make him buy more. Of course, man. We all, we all regret not buying more, you know? Yeah, somehow it's your fault. <laughs> exactly, Wales. Early end stake is a win-win. Owner gets their cash and stakers get a bonus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, man, Sinaloa sucks. Baja California gang. <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had a good time, man. I, I had a great time in Sinaloa. We were we spent seven months in Mexico. Six months of it were in Acapulco, um, but we got we have a child and Acapulco is rough, man. I, Staying out after dark in the city is a no-no, especially with a kid. Uh, it's just too chaotic. So uh, we had a beautiful apartment in Acapulco. And walk outside, and the pool was right there, and we were five minutes from the ocean. It was great. You know, we walk walk to this grocery store. <clears throat> um, it was all the reason we stayed in the resort area, not in downtown Acapulco. Uh, so I highly recommend it. But if you don't have kids, if you if you have kids, stay away from Acapulco. Uh, Insomniac, yes, I am. I, I'm married to a Panamanian. Uh, my wife, Anna Hilarski, you can check her out on Twitter or on YouTube, wherever. Uh, yeah, she's a little hottie. She's uh, <clears throat> half Costa Rican, half India, Indian. You know, the real the real India thing. Her grandfather is 100% through and through, and her dad. So, uh, it says Puebla, Guanajuato, and Querétaro. Yeah, I we were in uh, San Miguel. We were in San Miguel for like two weeks. I didn't like it, man. And uh, maybe because it was winter time and we we're at night, there's no heat in Mexican houses. We stayed in a beautiful Airbnb, brand new build. And I was actually turning on the stove <laughs> to stay warm. <laughs> hey, I grew up in the hood, man. I, I'm an inner city guy, man. When you're poor, you, you turn on the stove. And, and uh, that's that's what we did. <laughs> We were at, at our at our poor landlord. Um, after about four days, of that the gas tank went empty, and the Airbnb lady, she's like, "What happened? How'd you guys use up all the gas?" I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, exactly, exactly. Yeah, my wife, my wife is cool as hell, man. She's she's really cool. You know, she she's a stickler sometimes, but you know, she handles all the finances. She she pays. She takes care of all the bills. Uh, we are in Panama. This is her country, right? And we keep everything in her name. Um, 
as an American. For those of you guys who don't know about how it is for an American to live overseas, if you are still a U.S. citizen, you have to worry about FATCA. Uh, you have to have some reporting with your bank accounts. Uh, it's very hard to get a bank account, number one. You're going to need a lawyer probably to get one. And it's just a total pain in the ass. So uh, I don't I don't recommend going that route unless you, you're in that seven-figure, eight-figure club where you can, have, you can afford to have a lawyer handle everything for you. But I just did it the easy way. I just got married. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I heard that, uh, yeah, Richard, uh, you guys talking about Richard? Richard got scammed down here somehow. Uh, Richard Hart, he had some issues in Panama. No one, no one. Yeah, um, <clears throat> when you're traveling and you're looking to move to another country, being an American is not does not come with the benefits that it used to. 20, 30 years ago, being an American was just open do doors for you everywhere you went. Not anymore. Uh, my first business here in Panama, I partnered with some guys from Germany and another guy from South Africa. And I did not know until six months into it that they left me off the, the corporation. And they kind of screwed me. Uh, one day I went to the office. I said, hey, I need to see the books. Um, it's a marketing company that we started. And one of the German founders said, no, you can't see him. So they were using our company to do some things that were probably not legal. And I left quickly thereafter, but it was a good experience. I, I got to learn that, you know, not to trust anybody here. <laughs> I was the only American in the whole company. They had about 40 employees. And uh, I, I just got involved because the South African guy was a really good friend of mine. He, he took me into the company and said, Hey, we need Randy. He's one of the best marketers in Panama. I just got here and let's get him on. So, that's how, I, that's how I got going, man. It's all who you know, not what you know. Yeah, um, I, yeah, well, it's good to know about starting. Be really careful when you're starting a business abroad, guys. Uh, we have a company, uh, we have a trust, and we have a company. And the, the trust actually owns the company. And so you can, you can do all kinds of cool stuff here. And that's the, you know, and, and Panama is considered um, one of the great countries when it comes to finance. And that's why we always, Panama's always in trouble. <laughs> uh, and they refuse to change. They just accept it. You know, they, they like the fact that money is kept here. Uh, I worked in a building uh, with, that, with those German guys. It was a tower you know, about five minutes from here. And one day this guy shows up and he starts going into all the offices and he stopped by our office and he's wearing a white suit. He's got these white like penny loafers on. The dude just screamed, screamed money. <laughs> and he came walking in, he comes into the office where I'm sitting and my friend Mike is sitting and he says, hey guys, how do you like the office? And we're like, hey, it's nice. And he goes, yeah, I own this building. I, I built it 10 years ago. It's the first time I've ever seen it. He goes, I own like 200 buildings here in Panama. I'm like, what? <laughs> he was Colombian. <laughs> so uh, that, that was an interesting experience, man. <laughs> That's how that's how Panama is. They, these guys they they build these buildings just to um, to bring their make their money legit, right? Yeah. Debt, man, get out of debt, guys. Unless you're using debt to buy assets that are paying you money, you better get out of debt. Um, it feels good to be debt free. This is not a time to be. Um, like this with that, right? I like I said in the beginning of the show, cyber polygons here. Um, yeah, it could be, it could be like in the movie Fight Club, where all the banks and the towers collapse and we all start from scratch. <laughs> if the net goes down, wouldn't that be a, that'd be freaking awesome if that would happen? But more than likely, these guys are gonna they keep a stranglehold on everybody. If you have some debt, they're gonna come at you, um, even when you have nothing. They don't care. <clears throat> So, hey, those of you guys who haven't seen it yet, my mic is pretty bad. This is my new toy. It's got, got hex colors, and I can change it to pulse, the pulse colors. It's pretty badass. Bought it just to help us with our with our marketing efforts. Rick Smith says, I will never pay, pay my student loan. I don't pay student loans. I still have student loans back in the U.S. <laughs> I'm not paying those sons of bitches. 
When I, when I say debt, man, I, look, I'm in a different situation than you guys. I, I live in another country. I started all over again. Um, I recommend people do the same. If you can, that's the best way to go. I got another story for you. Um, there was a lady I used to know. She was a pastor. This is going back to about 1999. And she worked for Chase Manhattan during the week. And she, you know, she was a pastor on the weekends. And she said that their biggest problem at the time were foreigners, I'm not gonna say exact nationalities, I'm just gonna say foreigners were coming into the US. They were building up really high credit scores within a year to two year time frame. They were getting $100,000, $200,000, dollars worth of credit lines. They would take the credit and then they go back to their countries and never pay off the debt, just be gone. They come to the US, build up great credit, take the cash, and then bounce. <laughs> I was like, what? It, as a young, naive person, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was unbelievable. Xtoshi, what's up, man? Somniac says, I only make minimum payments on my student loans. My interest rate is 4%, and I can earn 9% in USDC, not even mentioning hex. So no reason to pay down debt, make more money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have a buddy here in Panama. He's... I got him into crypto. And this is a situation where the student becomes a professor. And <clears throat> he taught me about a project called Curve, where he deposits uh, USDC, or any, I think any of the stable coins, USDT, USDC. And he earns up to 40% APY. And it's constantly changing. It dips and goes up and down because it goes up and down with the price of the Curve token. Um, <clears throat> I thought that was really cool. He taught me that. and. Even though I don't use it, I said, great, you know, what happens if curve goes under? He didn't really have an answer for me, but you know, what if they what if the whole thing rub pulls like so many projects do? But I think curve's been around for about a, a year and a half now. Uh, but I have way more trust with with hex, <laughs> especially since hex is about to give us a whole other copy. <laughs> We're gonna double up, man. What do you guys think the price of the pulp PX is gonna be? I, I, I wonder about this myself. How long do you think it's going to take to come to equilibrium with, with eHex? Pay off debt, free up cash flow, put new flow into crypto. That, they, that's what I did, right? I, I don't, here in Panama, we have no debt. We have a credit card that we use to pay for everything. At the end of the month, we pay it off. Um, that's, how, that's how we live. So I'd like to know what you guys think about PHEX, where you think the PHEX price is going to be. Will it outpace EHEX or is it going to stay lower? How long will it take to get to equilibrium? How long until it passes EHEX? Uh, will it ever pass EHEX? I don't know. Yeah, pretty damn, yeah. Y3TG thinks pretty damn fast for equilibrium. I plan to buy the hell out of PHEX. I, I you know, I was. I used to say that you know e hex was the rich man's hex, and p hex is going to be the everyone else, all the new people and the poor folks hex because the fees are so low. But you know, I, I'm thinking that a lot of people are going to start taking their e hex, selling it, and turning it into p hex. If p hex equals to e hex, I will be a multi. <laughs> I know, man. I know is a lot of multimillionaires, man. If it even approached fifty percent of e hex, I'd be stoked. I think new users will opt more into PHEX. So it depends on adoption rate. Faster bull market res resumes and more people learn about HEX, faster will equalize. <clears throat> Look, let's go back to charts real quick. I want to show you guys something. Let's change. Let's get rid of HEX. I mean, let's go to, let's go to daily so you got anybody who missed it can see. Look, guys, we're red everywhere for, for HEX. And there, there's no... The, the thing is that's funny about HEX is that our demand index is over, oh, sorry, let me pull up. I didn't pull it up. This is on the daily. The demand index is still sitting over the zero line, uh, but the Orox indicator, which is a bunch of indicators put together and you know it's their own proprietary software. I call it um, AI, but you know it's like stupid AI, right? Because it, does, it doesn't understand that pulse chain is coming. So it doesn't care about that. So it's treating it like any other crypto. So right now we've got, uh, red signal on the daily and the weekly. Now let's go down to the hourly. Let's see if it switched green yet. Nope. But it looks like it could easily switch back to green. And But it's still it's still sitting over the zero line. Uh, look, looking great. I mean, I'm not worried here, guys. Not worried one bit. 
about the daily. And I mean, look how long it's been. The last time we were below the zero line was right here, May 25th of 2021 was the last time we were below the zero line. We've been super bullish for that long. Crazy. All right, let's change, let's change charts here. Let's bring up Bitcoin. All right, this is the weekly chart for Bitcoin. Um, see, we just, okay, just got, this This is what I would buy. This is how I, I, I would, if it was turning green and this was going over the zero line, that would be really bullish for me and that's what I would purchase. I, I would wait for the next following candle and then I would purchase. I'm a stupid trader. I, I, I like assurances. I like to feel confident when I make a trade. I'm not one of these people trying to buy the exact bottom. I don't do that kind of stuff. But if, this is a perfect setup for me. So if it would have been green here and this line right here was to cross over the zero line, I would say, oh, might be time to buy some Bitcoin. If I was still trading, right? <clears throat> and make maybe only make a couple trades a month. I'd be happy with that or a couple trades a year. Like right here, I would love this. It just touched the zero line and then it got a green candle and I probably would have bought right here. And look at all, you would have made nice fat moves there. Hex has done the same thing multiple times. So if the people still want to trade hex, they can, but you're not going to make as much if you just stake the shit and just earn the interest. It just makes no sense. Let's look at Bitcoin on the daily. Just got a green indicator, but we're still below the demand index line. Got to wait. Yeah, this is not. So if tomorrow right here, it crosses the zero line again and we have a second day passed when it turns green, that would be the time I would buy, like I said, and, and uh, make a nice move. You know, who knows what it would be? Maybe it'll go up 30%. Hey, 30%, so exciting. Not very much. Let's do one more. Let's do Ethereum. Sorry if this is boring to you guys, but I, for you guys, but I love, I love just looking at basic charts. I, I know Wales only is here, and he's probably looking at this and saying, Randy, man, dude, this is so amateur hour. I am, man. I'm, when it comes to charting, I am amateur. <laughs> I, I just use indicators that other people prepare for me, and uh, they seem they work great. This is a ETH on the weekly. We just went below the demand index, and we're still, we still have a downtrend going. There's not looking good for ETH for the weekly. How about the daily? Same thing. Just two days back, we got the red indicator and we're below the zero line. Sorry, crypto folks. It's not looking good. Kind of ugly out there for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, David says some of the swings during sacrifice and right before a snapshot could be a good swing trade like Big Payday. Yeah, I mean, remember what Big Payday, a week before Big Payday, it went really high. I can't remember what the price was. Um, where, where, I don't know, was it a penny, 1.2 cents, something like that? And then it came back down to 0 0.025 or 0 0.035. I remember Hexo was, uh, he was buying the, he bought the dip right on live during the show. He's like, I'm buying right now. And he got he got the exact spot where it dipped. <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. Hey, children of the grave. What's up, brother? Uh, what still blows my mind is if we have less than 40,000 stakers, what a tiny fraction of crypto market. Yeah, we're tiny. What happens when we hit 500,000 stakers? It'll be a lot more than a 10x. I ain't trading shit. Stake. Yep. Stake that shit. Well said, yeah, <laughs> LOL. Everyone does what works for them, man. Exactly. I like just opening up my <laughs> Orox and just clicking the indicators, boom, and it shows up and that's uh, two seconds. Yeah, that's a good place to buy. Like like it was um, last Friday, a week ago, when uh, uh, or the day before that, Hex hit 6.6 .6 cents and the indicator said it was a time to buy. I went in and I loaded up, bought a bunch and now we're at eight point four cents. So, hey Doug, what's up, man? One of my other fellow vets. I think Wales only a vet is a vet. Doug's a vet. Doug just recently re retired, and he 
he's a uh, he's man. Doug, you got into hex real early when I first started talking about it. Uh, Randy, you think the Pulse chain is a big payday event? And we'll have a dump on ETHX. Absolutely, I think ETHX is going to. I think we're going to have a flood into PHEX. That's just my personal opinion. Once we have the snapshot, those hours at the snapshot will be telling. Just pay attention to that. Doug says, what's up, Squidworth? <laughs> Combat Rescue Dougie here. Uh, greetings from 106 degree California. Dang, 106, what the fuck? <laughs> Panama never gets that temperature unless you're, you're up in the desert areas. We do have desert area in Panama, up in Cheap Tray. And uh, those areas in the summertime in, in uh, <clears throat> January, February, holy hell. I don't like going anywhere near it. Yeah. Huge winner in the AA. Good job, Doug. I can't wait for P. Mills only says, I can't wait for P. Hex. I'm hoping to retire on that trade. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I think uh, it, it makes no sense to stay in E. Hex, guys. I heard some, there was somebody that told me, I wish I could remember who, I had a great, it was a private conversation. And someone told me, oh, I, I know it was one of the guys from Axion. Look guys, I own Axion, I own a shit ton. I ain't, I ain't too proud to say it, man. I, I, I get paid every two days from it, so I'm happy. But these guys, thank, please guys, one thing I wanna say about Axion, respect them, man, because they all, they're all Hexicans as well. They, that's how they got into it, because they first started with Hex. And one of the whales uh, called me and said, hey, Randy, uh, I want to talk to you about Hex because he wants to do some re you know, reaching out and you know, try to mend some bridges since their founder left a long time ago. It's, their community is doing great. He said, what do you think about this uh, P Hex, E Hex thing? He goes, well, do, you, do you want to play it? How are you going to play it? And uh, what, what, are the, what are the plans for the future with Pulse and all the marketing efforts? And I just went through everything, man. I told him how I felt. I told him how I, I think that Pulse is going to overtake EHEX. It might not be right away. It, it might be a year, maybe two years. But he, he was pretty adamant. And what he came to me was with the developers at Axion, they have come up with a way to lower the fees of staking. They now only use, I think, six, six decimal points instead of 18 decimal points. And that's really lowered their fees. And <clears throat> he said to me, they're thinking that within six or seven years, if ETH keeps going up the way it's going and they're, the network for ETH gets super congested, it might, excuse me, it might be super difficult to unstake. He said that the, the ETH network might start breaking down. And I said, well, dude, man, I sure hope not. I'm sure they'll find a way to fix it. But... But is that what we want? Is we have to worry that something needs fixing in order for us to get our stakes out? I mean, that would really suck. So, uh, you know, I don't want to be the Mr. Rumor guy, but it, is Richard foreseeing this, that this could possibly be a problem for the staker class? And that was one of the reasons why he built PHEX to make sure that, to ensure that we are always able to access our money. It, it, it's quite possible, you know. These guys are these guys are also developers, and they're saying, "Look, there could be a problem on ETH for any project that uses staking in you know six seven years out from now." So, when I hear stuff like that from developers, I pay attention. So that kind of changed my mind about the whole rich people using the the ETH hex and everyone else using P hex. Well, it might be wise for us to start focusing on the P hex. Even though we all have these huge stakes in EHEX, that doesn't really matter because we're getting a full copy over on PHEX. All of the stuff that we have is going to be over there. So um, things break all the time, guys. This is crypto. So get used to it. I've lost a lot of money in crypto and lost you know houses worth of money on crypto. I'm going to change it back to uh, HEX here because we don't care about Ethereum. daily. Yeah. So what do you guys think about that? <laughs> this is, I, mean, I told you, I've always got my ears to the ground. I'm, I'm, I'm always getting calls from people from different communities. Um, I got some guys that want to uh, work with, with uh, 
Pulse Chain, and you know, I'm, I'm always open to hearing what they have to say. Will snaps uh, Frank D says, will Snapshot be announced or not? Yeah, of course. Um, I imagine that uh, Richard will do that. Why, why, why not announce a Snapshot? I've never seen a project that didn't do it. Well, Uniswap didn't announce it. They just did it, <laughs> right? Uh, I think uh, one inch also. But I understand why they did it because they just wanted to. So they wanted to reward the early supporters of those projects, and they did. Food TV says, "Why only wait for PHEX when you can buy HEX and after the fork you get both EHEX and PHEX?" Yeah, I mean, did someone say they're they're just waiting for PHEX? I wouldn't. Uh, Hazius are hey, welcome. I'll be playing it right. Sell my liquid EHEX on the pump play and. P hex, yes, that's possible too. Yes, Wells only less computation. That's what the Axion guys want for. They now that, like I said, they only have six. I think it's six decimal points. That's what they're switching to, and it's gonna. So it, it mean it lowers their the cost of doing stakes by. I mean, for, might be a hundred bucks now. It's gonna it drops down to like fifteen dollars. Um. Friday hangout. Well, it's at 11 p.m. Central. Uh, I'll, I'll, that's why I was doing this early. early. I'm, I'm kind of tired. We'll, we'll see how I feel in a couple hours. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this one up pretty soon. But yeah, if if the guys will have me, maybe I'll come on. Yeah, that's why he went ahead and said, "Fuck it," after the Berlin Fork. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Richard's a very smart man. He, he he doesn't have to see. The thing is, you don't always have to show all of your cards. You know, Richard might know that. Hex could be in big trouble on Ethereum in a couple of years, five, six, seven, eight years from now, right? He could foresee what can what might happen. And maybe some of the developers like, oh man, this isn't looking good for ETH. We gotta launch Pulse Chain. We gotta protect the people that believe in Hex and give them another chain to make sure that their funds and their future isn't just destroyed because some third party Ethereum uh, destroys the whole network for people who are staked. And you know, Ethereum, you know, let's get rid of the screen, let's get rid of this. Let's talk about Ethereum for a minute. I love Vitalik. He's my favorite weirdo, man. Gotta love him. I mean, who else do you know that picks his nose on screen and just flicks it at the wall? <laughs> Guy doesn't give a fuck. He's super, super smart, right? But he's got other actors around him that are helping make decisions for Ethereum, called the Ethereum Foundation. These people all get together, they have a little round table, and they make decisions. He is just the front man. So when people get upset at Vitalik, I'm like, look guys, Vitalik just works in the code. You know, All around them, the guys are saying, hey, we need to get rich. So how do we get rich? We get rich by locking up coins. And how, how they're doing it, they're coming up with all these new systems on Ethereum where you lock up your Ethereum and it's going to make things deflationary. Well, for everyone else who uses the network, that causes everything that we do on the network to be more expensive. And it's going to continue to get more expensive. Well, Hex and almost every other project on, on Ethereum uses 18 decimal points. Once you cut a couple decimal points off, it's less computation, as Whale said, and it costs less money to do things. Hex is a completed project. So maybe there's no way for um, the developers of Hex to go in and change the decimal points to keep the fees low. So Richard decides, look, we need a new chain. I'm launching Pulse. Thank you, Richard. I respect that. Kudos to you watching out for those of you or watching out for those of us who believed in your project and uh, making sure that we don't get screwed over by the guys of the Ethereum Foundation, All right? Hey, Wales, I got a good T-shirt for you. 1984, make Orwell fiction again. <laughs> My boy, uh, Luke Rutkowski, he's got uh, wearechange.org. Um, he's a, a journalist in New York City who travels the world and you know interviews great people. And he's got a whole T-shirt series, um, political T-shirts. I think it's politicalteachers.com or something. But you just go to wearechange.org and you can find the link to it. We got some really good ones. <laughs> I love it, man. I wore the other one the other night. It said "Stop War" on it, and then the little letters in "Stop War" said uh, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. So someone look closely. <laughs> Cracked me up. 
Yes, yes. Luke is that guy, that crazy guy who went on Epstein's Island with Jeff Berwick. <laughs> yeah. Look, guys, man, these guys are all friends of mine. <laughs> That's my community. We just all hung out together when we were in Mexico. Uh, Luke's, Luke's back in the States now. I think he's in Florida just because Florida is more free. You know, he, did, he got tired of New York. Uh, he, he ran away to Florida. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly, Doug. The t-shirts, they, they get a lot of attention even here in Panama because a lot of people here speak English. So when I go to the mall and stuff and I wear these kind of t-shirts, people look at me and they're like, oh shit, man. I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> people usually wear sports t-shirts that they hear my wearing a political t-shirt. I got a funny story yesterday. We were at the, uh, the park. I took my son to the park. Uh, he just made himself known. He just screamed. Uh, and he was... Uh, we walk into the park and my son wants to run and go to the playground. And there was a, a guy with a big camera. It looked like a television reporter camera. And he's recording us as we're coming in. And I always have my mask down. I don't give a fuck, right? I, I, I get yelled at by the cops occasionally. Um, but here in Panama, we have still have a mask, mask mandate. So we're supposed to go outside and we're supposed to wear a mask, you know, when we're outside. I'm not good, I don't listen. So I'm walking into the park, I got my mask down, he's recording me the whole time. And I said to the guy, as I walk up to him, I said, hey, que es esto? I was asking him, you know, what is this? And he says, TVN. And TVN is the, the biggest TV channel in Panama. So knee jerk reaction. I did the middle finger and I walked right up to the camera. <laughs> and, uh, and then I went over to the municipal cop who uh, you know, who was watching the park. It's a tiny park, so it's, uh, yeah, he's just, there to make sure the kids are safe and all that. I said, hey, and tell him in Spanish. I said, can you get rid of this guy, please? This is, can we have some privacy? We don't need this guy videotaping our children and putting it on TV tonight. <laughs> so the cop went and kicked the guy out of the park. I was like, hey, I'm not a statist, but it, it suited me at that moment. Um, I'm tired. It seems like every week or two, my mother-in-law <laughs> She's telling my wife, hey, I saw Randy on TV. It's like the, these freaking TV people, they're always recording me because I always have my mask now. And like all oh, these bad gringos, always walking around without their masks. Uh, Gabriel says, follow Luke for years. Good guy. Yeah, he's, he, he does a good job. Whale says, I go over the charts that I make in pretty good detail on those charts, set videos. If those are charts you're talking about, Insomniac trading wise, I do not. Okay. He's... Whales make some really intricate charts. I, yeah. when, when, when Whales is explaining stuff, man, he's, it's like way over my head. I'm just like, FOMO good. <laughs> That's all I care about. <laughs> Price go up, up and to the right. <laughs> uh, did you see the DAP Radar article today, Randy? Hell of a 180, good to see it's coming up. Yes, I did see that. I think they rated us number four, right? Uh, saying that Hex is, or right now Hex is right number four of the top DAPs on Ethereum, I believe. I don't know if it's just Ethereum, but I imagine it is. But oh man, things are changing so quick. It's blowing my mind. Like for example, let's let's uh, show this video from yesterday. It it just this one made me smile from ear to ear. You could, if you hated Hex, you could have bought it and sold it on a double, 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 or sold it on a fucking double. And we're almost to the next one, 10 doublings. Like, oh, you don't like it? We'll sell it on a fucking double. I just, we make more than you would have in Bitcoin. Yeah, no, I'm with you on that. Like, is it that? Open handed. Slap. Richard slapped the shit out of them. <laughs> Sell it on a double. Sell it on the double. Oh, God. Hex Alt says, I love the anarcho capitalism with Randy. Yeah, fine. Let's say. So, yeah. Repair hexagons. Okay. Yeah, and then I want to show you the other one, too. That just blew my mind. You know, the thing, I, thing is, guys, there, there's not a lot of people in crypto that are still uh, anarcho capitalists. It seems like we've seen a lot of people come into the community lately. I'm not saying lately, since 2017. And the people that came in since 2017 are only here to get rich. I really generally, God, God's honest truth, guys, I got in for the technology. When I got in 2014, I bought it for 50 and it dropped to 250 
I did not see a profit on my Bitcoin for almost a year and a half. So, you know, yeah, these in 2017, it all turned all of us greedy, even me. You know, I was like, holy crap, I, I was a millionaire for a week. <laughs> and then it dropped back down and it, it felt good. And after that, I was like, hey, I, I'm enjoying this. I'm, I'm first, time in my, first time in my life, I'm wealthy. I actually feel like I have money. If you're a millionaire, millionaire in Panama and you're filthy rich, filthy rich compared to most people. I mean, if you're a millionaire in New York City, it's not much. But here, man, it's great. All right, let's do let's do the next one. People have fan fiction theories about how price should work, and then I design something that murders everything else else that has ever existed, and then they just can't believe it's happening. It's happening. But it, Hex will be the number one market cap coin within the next year or two, and we can come back to this video, and you could go, oh, but Richard told me, and I didn't believe it. Yeah, I told you, and you'll see. It's yeah. happening. We, it's better than Bitcoin, period. <laughs> Up until the right, guys. Number one, we're going for it. <laughs> Man, he just makes them look so bad. <laughs> I, just, I just don't know what to think, Man, These... These guys who are continually trying to make themselves look good by trying to bash Hex, they're just, they're gonna look so, everything on the internet stays on the internet. This stuff does not go away. It's there for years, for decades. I mean, you still see content from years ago that's pulled up to make people look bad. And then you got stuff that's on the blockchain like Steam and Hive and, and Library, Odyssey. That's just all on the blockchain, man. Once it goes there, it never comes off. It's there forever. Forever. Doug says, I was stationed in Silicon Valley from 20, 2007 to 2020 and still waited for 2016 to enter crypto. I had no excuse to wait that long. Tech was clear, but most of us were timid. Yeah. Boys against men. Exactly. Exactly, Nick. Richard is a champ. Tory number five is number four overall. Exactly, Jonathan. <clears throat> I just, people need to start waking up because they're going to get left behind. And the thing is, like this other guy, I don't even know, Crypto RS, he went, he made, he he did a, you know, was over, talked over that video that Richard did, you know, talking bad about Richard, those kind of things. And then what he does is he goes and he blocks all the hexagons on Twitter. Yo, man, how beta can you be? <laughs> when I talk shit, man, I don't go run and hide under a rock. Forget that. Forget it. Uh, Donnell says, I saw a reaction video for that interview. Guy couldn't say nothing about Richard Hart. So long. yeah, I, th I think that was that uh, crypto RS guy. Exactly. I, I, I didn't get blocked. I checked. Um, I thought maybe he went through the whole hashtag hacks and just started blocking everybody. But he left me alone. Smart guy. <laughs> Now, now, what I want to talk about is the power of the blockchain and uh, writing and doing social media on the blockchain because I was one of the original people on Steam and I, I was, and Steam's how I got my first serious chunk of money in crypto. And I went to Anarchapulco in 20, it was 2018, so it was March 2018 or February, something like that. And we flew Aero Mexico from Panama to Mexico City. And um, first, Aero Mexico made us, they postponed our flight to the next day. So we had to actually get a hotel. And so I had to book a hotel room overnight in Mexico City. And um, my wife at the time, she was scared of Mexico City. So she's like, we need to stay in a nice hotel. So we stayed at the Sheraton. Uh, you know, it was like, they call it a five star, but man, it's more like three and a half. Uh, <clears throat> but it was like 200 bucks extra, right? So I was pissed. I was like, why? I mean, these motherfuckers, they changed the flight, not me. I mean, they should pay for my hotel room. And we get to the we get to the, the airport in the morning. Our flight leaves at, I think it was 7.30 a.m. or 8.30 a.m. And we're waiting at our gate. It said, I'll never forget this, it was gate 55. And we were sitting there, and it's about 45 minutes before our flight's supposed to leave. I said to my wife, and we got our child. He's only, uh, actually, this is 2019, because, uh, yeah, he was a year old, so it was 2019. And I said to my wife, I said, man, there's nobody at the gate and there's nobody around here waiting. There's something wrong. So I got up and I went, looked at the, you know, the, the board and then they, they changed the flight to gate 17. I was like, what the, 
And that's the whole other side of the airport, right? So we get him in the stroller and we truck across the airport. We get to the gate. I said to the lady, I said, hey, um, we're here for the flight and you know, leaving in 30 minutes. And she says, oh, um, that flight's boarding right now. It's already booked. They're leaving. You were too late. It's like, what, bitch? I'm too late. And I was, I was pissed. And I, you know, I started to throw a fit. My wife said, hey, hey, calm down. And the lady said, okay, go, just go to the um, out, out in the main lot, main area concourse and uh, try to get onto the next flight. So we go out and we, we did all that. And the guy says to me, he goes, oh, you can't do that. There's, there's no flights. So you're going to have to book another flight for tomorrow and pay for it. I said, what do you mean? I'm not paying for another flight. I said, you guys changed the gates and the plane left 30 minutes early. And I'm you know, showing my phone, showing my watch. And I'm like, it's not even time for a plane to leave yet. So uh, all, it all ended up being that I threw a fit in the airport and I threatened to uh, beat the shit out of him. <laughs> And uh, they said that um, they couldn't do anything. I had to pay for more tickets. Uh, and they said because I broke my schedule that I had to buy tickets to go back to Panama again, too. It was some crazy shit, guys. I was I was livid because all the tickets altogether cost about three grand, right? So <clears throat> he says that and goes, well, you can call Aero Mexico and, and straighten it out with them. And I said, man, we got to be in Acapulco. We have... We have an event that starts today. Got to get there. So we ended up taking a bus to Acapulco. And we get there, and a couple of days went by, and I finally got on the phone with, with uh, Aeromexico. Aeromexico made me call cheaptickets.com where we bought the tickets. All said and done, finally it worked out. I got my tickets back. But the crazy thing is they wanted me to go back to Mexico City. And I, I won't even go into all that. It was some crazy shit. You can read the article if you want. But if you type in Aeromexico scam, on Google, you could read the whole article I wrote on Steemit. It's on the blockchain. It's there forever. And the moral to the story is this year when we went to Mexico, I tried to book a flight on Aeromexico to go from um, Acapulco to Mazatlan. They wouldn't let me book the flight. I am blocked forever on Aeromexico because my article ranks so high. It's like the number three thing. If you type in Aeromexico Sam, it's right at the top, the first page of Google. <laughs> I love the blockchain. So I didn't know that, right? I, I, I couldn't figure out why our payment wouldn't go through. And I contacted Aeromexico. I said, I want to buy a ticket. And I said, no, you can't. You're you're forever blocked from buying tickets with Aeromexico. <laughs> so uh, there's another reason to not live in Mexico since it's very hard to get around that country unless you, you have to fly everywhere from town to town just because it takes forever. Um, so word to the wise, if you use, if you talk shit in crypto, Everyone's using blockchain technologies. You got people like me, like this This video right now is going to go down forever in the archives of crypto and beyond the library blockchain. It will be there forever, motherfuckers. So the history books will be kind to Randy because Hex and Pulse Chain are gonna do very well. And those of you guys who support it are gonna be looked well upon. And the ones that are out there calling it a scam, Feel bad for you, bros. You made a very bad decision. Uh, <laughs> George has no hex and his ass is burning. <laughs> Crypto RS is trash. Dude, I've never heard of him. I mean, how many of you guys have never heard of him? Uh, he's got a good amount of following too. And uh, he was a BitConnect guy back in, the, back in the day. He's the human form of a pinky toe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my son came running up to me today. He's like, hey, dad. And he kicked my pinky toe. Oh, man. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> you know that the pain and the anger just wells up inside of you. Yeah, man. It, people, Danelle, Danelle says, is a part of the new wave, Odyssey, Library, New Frontier. Yeah. And I'm going to start streaming on Library. You know, I already have my keys. I already have it ready to go. And I'm going to. I'm going to see if I can do YouTube and library together, kind of like Discourse Syndicate does Theta with YouTube. I'm going to try to do YouTube with library because nobody's over there. It's the Hex Wild West, right? Um, I know that Trey, Trayvon James, he's the only other uh, Hexkin that really takes library serious. Um, I know that Coffee is over there, Crypto Coffee. 
and a couple other folks. I think Richard's channel, whenever he does stuff, it goes over to library automatically. So he uses it too. But you know, I'm not there for the money, guys. Library, even the coin has suffered. Guys. It's ever since the SEC filing, the price has just taken a dump. But it's still a great way to get our face or get the brand in front of everybody. Um, when I had that meeting with the CEO of Library uh, last year, it was about a year ago right now when we launched Library Latem. I was working on the library team, my wife and I, and the Library Latin America just launched. <clears throat> in one of our meetings, Jeremy says, I, I brought up Hex. You know, I said, hey, have you checked out Hex? Jeremy goes, man, I'm so fucking tired of Hex. He said, Trayvon and uh, God, I can't remember the other guy's name. And these guys are making tons of videos about Hex and they're on the front page of, of library because I'm so fucking tired of hearing about it. <laughs> I bet he wishes he bought a bot some. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he's waiting to hear back from the CCP <laughs> to do the stream with Rich. Uh, uh, Thomas, that was wrong, bro. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Ducaro says anybody can buy fake followers. That is absolutely true, and projects do it all the time. You know, I was building my app. Uh, we're having some a rough patch right now. My dev just left. <laughs> Fucking hate, man. I've been through like five devs, and uh, we're looking. I'm going to give it one more chance. But the whole point of my project was to help people build followers peer to peer style. You know, instead of having to go out, go to India and buy these freaking, you know, these farms that have thousands of phones and they follow you and things like that. No, I don't like that. That's not kosher, man. So uh, I wanted to do it my way and get this app built, but hey, we're struggling. You know, uh, like Richard always says, building software is hard. And I've been working at this for three freaking years, man. And I'm about to just call it quits and say, you know what? I got other things I could do. I could be promoting Hex, I can be promoting Pulse Chain and do that full time instead of worrying about my own project. You know, Rich said there's two types of people who get rich, owners and holders. And I was about to be both, but might not be. Maybe I'll just be a holder. But being a holder is not bad, man, especially if you're in Hex. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to call it a night, and uh, we'll see what time. I guess they're streaming in about an hour and a half for the Discord Syndicate, and I might come on. We'll see. We'll see what's happening. My son's still awake, so I got to go wear him out. Got to get him to bed first. All right. Cheers. Hey, thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, I hope you like my new toy. Uh, it's all about that hex, baby. Ciao.